Chapter 3, we are dealing with the formula part equals base times rate. And that formula is carried out throughout Chapter 3. We just, in each section, we solve for something different. Um, and this could be the type of formula that maybe you can do some of these problems on the uh, just off the top of your head. But if not, revert back to this formula. Um, and the part is always like the calculated number. The base could be last year's sales, it could be last year's income, it could be um, your sales amount that you're calculating sales tax on, which is going to be my first example, and then your rate is always a percentage rate. Um, so, so say if you, if we go back um, to the first section where we're, or the, it's actually section two, where we're just computing out um, our part. So say, for example, sales tax. So if we are purchasing a laptop that has a selling price of $599, and if our sales tax are 7.75%, what, what would be the amount of tax that we would pay? So our part is what we're looking for. The price of the laptop, which in my example is $599, and then our sales tax rate is the 7.75%. And again, you can let your calculator convert that to a decimal for you. The financial calculator will do that if you push the percent button or just convert it to the decimal on your own. Um, but then if you take your $599 and multiply that by 0 0.0775 or 7.75 and then push the percent button, you get tax of $46.42. So then that tax is actually your part, and that would be added back to the price to figure out how much you actually have to pay. So that's kind of the basics of it. And then if you'd like to think of it in terms of a, of a big pie, um, you know, the, the sales tax would just be a piece of that total price that you're paying, um, you know, if that kind of helps you. Then sometimes the harder ones are maybe when we're actually looking for... Um, when we're actually looking for the base, where they give us the part, and then they give us a rate, and we're kind of solving backwards. Um, so then I'm going to pull an example from that, and it deals with student debt. So it says that if there's 1,843 college students that have more than $10,000 in student loans, and that is 36.7% of the entire group of college students, how many college students are there? So again, what their the percentage, the, dollar, the I'm sorry, the number of students that they give us are not the total population. They're just the, the population that has more than ten thousand dollars in student loans. Um, so that what that number was one thousand eight hundred and forty three students. What we don't know is the total population of students. So that total population represents our base, or again that whole pie. And then it tells us 37, or I'm sorry, 36.7% um, represent that number of students. So again, we can convert that into a decimal, or you can let your calculator do it. And then I always just leave the formula this way um, versus, you know, try to re rearrange it to have the B over here. So basically, this is saying that it's 3.67 times B is equal to 1,843. So I'm just going to divide both sides by that 36.7%. So if I take 1,843 students divided by 0.367 or 36.7%, that gives me a base of 5,021, and it actually goes out 0.79, but we'll round that up to the nearest student. So 5,022 students have have more than ten thousand dollars in debt or I'm sorry that was a that was a total the total population that one thousand eight hundred and forty three have the more than ten thousand dollars in debt so again try to think that you know when we're solving for the base you're solving for that total population or you know again um, total sales or, or something like that we're, but we're going back they give us the piece of the pie and we're going to try to go back and figure out what that whole pie is and then you also could, could be asked to solve for the rate. So I would, I would do that type of a problem the same way. 
But what I'm going to skip to now is the increase-decrease problems. Those are the ones that most students struggle with and will end up missing some points on their test. Um, and I don't want that to happen to you. Um, so then what this one is saying is that if you have an increase or decrease, so, so what they give you uh, um, is, is what would end up being the part, but that part either includes the increase or is, or is less the decrease. So what I always do is, is figure out first, well, what's my rate? So I'll read you the problem. We have the average cost of a wedding is I'm sorry, $24,066, which is 26% more than the average cost five years ago. So find the average cost of the wedding five years ago. So what we're going back to is the base. What was the cost of that wedding five years ago? The amount that they give us, the $24,066 today, is actually our part. Now, if you're thinking in terms of a pie, it's more than the whole pie. It's saying that it increased 26%. So our rate is 100% of what it was five years ago plus 26%. So the amount that they give me is actually 126% of what it was five years ago. So then when I come down to my part equals base times rate formula, the part is the amount that the wedding costs today, which is the $24,066. What it cost five years ago is my base, and that's what I'm looking for. But I do know that, it was a, that this is 126% of what it was five years ago. So again, 126% is 1.26. So then we're left to that same type formula like we had on the last one, where I'm going to divide both sides by that rate. So $24,066 divided by 1.26, or 126%, tells me that the weddings five years ago cost $19,100. Now, what students will do, and I'm not going to put it on the board because I don't want to, you know, encourage you to do it. Students will do it in a very shortcutted manner. So what they'll read the problem and they'll say, oh, okay, well, if weddings today are $24,066 and it's an increase of 26%, if I just multiply that, I get, a, I get an increase of $6,257. And then if I subtract that from my 24,066, that should take me back to what it was five years ago. If you shortcut it that way, your answer would be $17,808. And that gets you in the ballpark, but it is not correct, and you're not going to get the points on your test. So you have to go back and do that first step and think about the actual increase. The decrease, you would do it the same way, except for then you'd subtract. But I always do that first step to figure out what's my new percentage. Then I go back to my part equals base times rate formula. And that is pretty much chapter 3.